Hi everyone, it's Lisa and Luna from Don't Run With Scissors back with another Technique Tuesday. I do believe I've done this technique uh, earlier, but because of Mother's Day and how popular this card that I've made has become, uh, I've been making almost a dozen of them, so I decided, what the heck, let's make a video on it um, because it really is unique and quite beautiful. So these are the cards that I've made uh, for Mother's Day, for friends, for my mom, and for everyone else. And uh, they're, they're incredible, really easy to make, um, great products to use. And I'm going to be making another purple one today. Um, but as you can see, I, I have a blank one here that's green. So I'm going to make an extra one just in case. Um, so if anybody else needs a Mother's Day card, they're ready to go. Um, but these are using Penny Black stamps uh, and stencils and the Lawn Fawn uh, stitch cut rectangles and uh, some distress ink. So really easy. This is the one we're going to be making, so uh, we're going to get started. How I've done this and how I've made this card this simple is because of this machine. This is called the Brother Scan and Cut, and if you've never seen it before, uh, it's worth every penny. Uh, I was reluctant to move from the Cricut to this, but uh, it has proved its weight uh, tenfold. Um, so what happens is this machine, there's patterns that are built in, so you don't really need any images or uh, cartridges and it can also scan so you can input an image like you're going to see here it's going to recognize it and then it can cut it out in many different ways shapes and sizes so that's what we're going to do um, those of you that do have the scan and cut at home uh, this is the stamp I stamped it three times with the Lawn Fawn uh, no I didn't Hero Arts Shadow Ink um, but you can notice here that the, the uh, stamp has an open end so what you need to do on your machine is you need to close end anything that's outstanding. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to draw my line. I've already done it on the other two. In my dry run, this scan did work. It didn't give me any problems. So we're going to hope it continues to do that today. Okay, so I've close ended all my flowers. I'm going to hit scan. I'm going to hit direct cut. And I'm going to hit start. I'm going to pull the machine forward just so I can get the back end here. And you can see the three flowers coming out that I'm looking for. And like I said before, this did work. So we'll hope to at least get one of them to come back online here. So what it's doing is it's recognizing the image. It's processing what it just scanned. And uh, you'll see hopefully three images pop up. It's not going to be the clearest image. Um, and you can, let me see if I can zoom in here just a little bit. So you can see the three flowers. I'm going to click OK. And you can see the images um, and the outlines. Unfortunately, the one on the left uh, didn't come out as great as I would have hoped. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to nix that one. You can drag and drop to see which... Oh, well, hang on a minute. Come on. We'll go with it. Okay. Come on. Okay. So now I have my two images that are highlighted, and you can kind of change the area. My mat is um, pretty dirty, so sometimes uh, it picks up other odds and ends that I don't need cut out. Um, and unfortunately, that is going to be one of them. But, uh, anyways, what we're going to do, we'll just worry about this end one here can't multitask on the video apparently today. Okay, I'm going to hit an outline button. And as you can see, the outline distance, I'm going to do 0.04. So it's going to outline the whole flower and the stems and keep it one big piece. And then I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit cut and watch the magic. Pull this forward just a little bit. Back up. You can do this with any stamp. Uh, sometimes the more detailed ones are trickier and you need to kind of do a preset outlining it in a marker just to get a good outline. 
but there you go. This is what this machine can do. I get a little fuzzy with this touch screen every now and again, but this is what it can do. So I'm going to put this aside and then we can make our card. I love, love, love this machine. I can't say it enough. So from this, this stamp here, again, it's a penny black stamp. I have a 0.04, uh, outlined edge image of it completely cut out. No fussy cutting, no anything crazy like that. So the fun begins with, let's do our background first. So since the flower is going to go this way, the stencil will also need to go the same direction. Don't, don't mess that part up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over because what we're going to do is put the ink on the stencil. So back with my stencil flipped over. So that's going to go that direction. I'm going to do light blue all the way around. I mean, just stress inks. Love them. And I'm going to be a little lighter with the dark. Just don't need it everywhere. And we're going to spray it. Let it move a little bit. Piece of cardstock. And put it down. What I like to use is a paper towel to allow it to absorb. You don't get your fingerprints in there. And we're going to come back. And then we're going to take our dark stamp here. This time I'm going to use some black ink. Black Distress Ink. Come on in. I'm going to go right back on the stencil. That's nice and wet. I'm going to do one more layer up here on the top. Don't worry if your image smudges a little bit because um, the flower is going to hide anything that you made a mess on. And we're going to flip this back on. Wipe here so I don't get anything on me. Go right back in and push those words that you just stamped on your stencil right back in. And there you have the words in the background. Very cool. It's just a quick rinse and off to the side. So now it's time to color in the flower. And flowers aren't naturally blue. Well, some are, I guess. So I'm going to go a little more uh, purpley on this one, uh, lighter. So I'm going to take my Distress Inks here. I think we're good with these. Let's see what kind of colors we can get out of here. And I have Shaded Lilac and Milled Lavender. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go in with my water brush get that all colored up and then come in with my my color you want to try to do it as evenly as possible on that first base so that you don't get um, streaks in it just on the the initial swipe sometimes we all get a little heavy-handed and the color just kind of streaks so Come back in and we'll definitely blend this. Okay, now I'm going to come in here for the lilac. Not so good at staying in the lines there. <laughs> nice, delicate flower. You can make these any color you want. I mean, I guess they're more on the poppy-ish side, so that's red. But, you're an artist. Create at will. Alright. Back in with the dark. Now because um, this petal here really is the focal point on the flower, you need to 
give that a little bit of a uh, an accent to make it darker. So I'm going to take, I think, Concord, just a Concord, just a little bit of that, and I'm just going to do the bottom and the edges around the big, and we'll go back and blend that in after as well. Just to make that front petal really pop. And I'm going to mix them all in and come back in. And we'll just add a little bit in over here. Bring that Concord color in. It's your palette. Enjoy. Bring some of that dark back in down here. And I think, I think we're colored in pretty well. So then, if you want to change it up, then go and look at your flower compared to your background. Are you happy with how it, what colors are in there? Um, and then you're going to go in and add the green. This is where it really makes it pop. So I, I don't play around with my flower too, too much um, until I get the green on there. Because sometimes that makes a huge difference. Um, I have bundled sage. Oh, and I, of course I messed that up. Hang on here. Missed a flower. So come back. Just color the tip of this. That's all we need to do there. All right, now we're going in for the green. Do all these. And these are just very fun and relaxing. And your brush is fine enough. The tip here is just to go all the way down with that green color. No issues whatsoever. And if you uh, have your eraser close by, you can erase those marks down there, or you can just cut them off. It's really whatever in your, whatever you want to do. Okay, a bit darker there. Fill that in. Come back here, the purple real quick. Now that everything's drying, you can see a little bit where the splotches are. Come back in and fix that. Okay. What really finishes this card off is uh, Wink Estella. And what I do is I come in and I outline the whole big flower in Wink Estella. Um, I think it makes it just absolutely pop. So all I'm going to do is I have my fine Wink Estella. It's black. And I'm just going to outline the flower. I'm not going to spend too much time fussy coloring. And I also outline the flower. And you can see these are fine enough to get these intricate little lines here. So pretty. And I'll add a little to this little stock here and then this piece here. And there you go. You have your flower and its veins. And it's very sparkly. Um, so then you can take your foam tape and uh, put it right down. I do pop it and then you can cut it out and mat it however you want. Uh, you can make your sentiment that says Happy Mother's Day like this one has. 
uh, or whatever else it needs to say. So there you have it, uh, how you make your uh, stencils into watercolors and, and backgrounds and all sorts of fun tips and tricks uh, and also using the Brother Scan and Cut. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. Have a